everyone. I'm Bert Vargas from the American Headache Society. And if you don't know anything about our Migraine Moment uh, short film competition, you need to listen to this Facebook Live. And you need to uh, tune into some very special videos uh, that, that we're going to show and, and, and give you the links to. I'm with our grand prize winner from this year, uh, Maria Gali, who's from Miami, Florida, and uh, submitted this year's excellent grand prize winning video entitled Invisible Hero. And so I really wanted to give you guys the opportunity today to tune in, ask questions, and, and just learn a little bit about Maria and, uh, and her outstanding work. And with that, you don't want to listen to me. I'm going to hand it off to, uh, to Maria. Maria, please tell everyone a little bit about yourself and, and about your video. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Maria Gali. I'm originally from Argentina. I now live in Miami. Um, and I have chronic migraine. Uh, I've had migraine attacks most of my adult life. And uh, a few years ago, they took a turn for the worse and they became chronic. And with that, everything changed. Uh, my whole life went upside down and uh, nothing was the same. Uh, the person I used to be wasn't there anymore. I didn't even recognize myself. I spent most of my time laying down in a dark room, uh, waiting for it to pass, and that moment never came. I was always in pain, constant pain, always trying to figure out why, why this was happening, what was happening, and what I could do to try and feel better, especially because everyone around me that knew how high energy and how big of a go-getter I am what was happening? Where was that person? Where did she go? And all of a sudden, I was a shell of that person just uh, trying to survive uh, mm -hmm. day by day. So when I saw this uh, contest, I thought it was a fabulous idea uh, and a great opportunity and a golden chance for me to share my story um, with the world and help create better awareness about what it is like to live with migraine uh, because there's a lot of misconception about what it is. There really are and, and you see we have some people tuning in already. If, if you're out there and you have some questions that, uh, that you want to ask uh, Maria, please fire away. I uh, would love to hear your questions. Uh, if, if you haven't seen the video, we'll, we'll make sure to post a link. But one of the, the, the brilliant uh, pieces of this video that I think that really made it stand out was the fact that not only did you brilliantly capture the, uh, the, the disability that migraine can impart on, on the people who have it, but you, you really also came across as showing yourself as being just a resilient warrior, basically. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I think me and the rest of the judges loved the superhero component to the video and, and I, I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Um, what, what, what made you think of taking the superhero angle? Well, um, that's, that's a long question. Part of it is answered in the video. Um, I think since I was a kid, um, who doesn't think at some point in their lives that they are superheroes? Uh, and when I started experiencing migraines and feeling so sick all the time uh, with these weird symptoms, like being able to hear things uh, so, you know, in so much detail or smelling everything and uh, the sensitivity to the light and all these like things that feel like not normal. Um, it felt like it was like superpowers and uh, the way like you feel weak, almost like when Superman is close to his kryptonite. and. Um, I'm a creative person and it suddenly started feeling like it was an easier way to explain to people what I was going through when I had an attack, a way that people could relate to what I was experiencing um, in a way that they would understand it better than if I just said all the medical terms of what I was going through. Um, and because a lot of our struggles are struggles in silence. This is an invisible illness. Other than me laying down in my couch and knowing what's going on inside my body, nobody sees what's happening. They see me other than like maybe a little bit more gaunt. I look the same. So uh, it's, it's all happening inside. 
So it's it's like that same struggle that superheroes have. They're they're alone. They have a secret identity. Nobody knows who they really are, what they go through um, inside of their secret identity. And I felt that it was the same for anyone that goes through a migraine attack. Uh, you are alone when that is happening, and nobody outside that can really relate. You're fighting the migraine on your own, um, and it's time that we create better awareness and we tell the world that no, we don't need to be alone. We don't need to fight alone and like hide in the dark. Well, you have to hide in the dark when you're feeling really bad with a migraine attack, but um, let's create better awareness and you know try and eliminate the stigma of migraine is not a bad headache. It's so much more. So. How can we help change that? And that's what I wanted to do with this video. And I, and I think you did it brilliantly. And, and I, well, one of the things that, um, that I, I also think was, was really brilliant was the, was the fact that you talk about superpowers, right? <laughs> and, you, and you talk about the, the photophobia and the phonophobia, even the osmophobia, right? The, the sound sensitivity, the, the smell sensitivity, the light sensitivity of migraine. And you, you talk about them almost as as superpowers, but superpowers that you don't want. Right? Yeah. And, and a lot of times, even in superhero movies, it's powers that they don't really want. Yeah. Right? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, that's exactly it. Uh, superheroes, when they realize they have superpowers, most times comes as a shock. They don't really want them. They don't know why they're getting them. Um, and that's what happened to me when I started getting all these symptoms and experiencing migraine. And it's like, why is this happening? What is this? And um, how do I deal with it? And um, I, I started calling them superpowers because when I'm surrounded by other people and I start complaining about a smell being too uh, bad um, and nobody else seems to be bothered by it and it's like driving me crazy or um, the light being too hard on my eyes and I need to wear sunglasses inside and everyone's looking at me like I am crazy. Uh, well, it starts to get to you because um, you start feeling the guilt of being the annoying one, of being the misunderstood, of being like, maybe I'm exaggerating these things. Um, maybe it's all in my head, and pun intended. Uh, so, it, 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 they do act like superpowers that the only thing they do is they tell you that a migraine attack is coming. Mm -hmm. And you so, know, when you, when you talk about the journey that you've, you've gone through, um, I, I know in, in, in our conversations you talked about all the, all the doctors you've seen. I think there's been seven neurologists yeah. that you've seen. What has that journey been like for you? And, and, and knowing that you have not necessarily had great success in some of these spots along that journey. You still maintain this, this just resilient nature, this really positive, hopeful nature. How do you do that? Well, that's just me. Yeah. Uh, I was raised that way. Um, I never give up hope. I always think that I can win and I will never stop fighting to beat this ever ever. Um, so even in the hardest days, even those days that seem hopeless, um, uh, I always try to go to bed thinking tomorrow will be another day and tomorrow can be better than today. And that keeps me going. Um, and knowing that even though sometimes even the people around me that love me might not understand what I'm going through, they're always there. And having that support uh, knowing that there are doctors that care, that are trying to help us and find uh, better ways to treat this monster is, you know, what keeps me going. So all the rest goes out the window. I just focus on that. And I don't lose sight of that, even in the worst moment, mm -hmm. even when I'm screaming and crying and feeling like, why and it's desperating I come down and I think no there is hope you have to beat this if I don't believe that 
uh, I don't know how I would be able to go on. So I have to believe that. <laughs> and that keeps me going. Uh, but I've always been like that about everything in life. But it really, um, you really portrayed that very well uh, in, in your video. We could see that, that, that part of your, of your nature very clearly. Um, you know, I, I, one of the other reasons that I, 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 I like this contest so much is because it gives us as, um, as physicians, um, as all of our other uh, professionals who treat migraine, it gives us an opportunity to hear from our patients, right? To hear from people with migraine and learn about their story and how, how they, they manage their, their world. If, if you had the opportunity, and, you, and I think you do actually, to, to talk to, to physicians and, and uh, advanced practice providers, nurses, anyone medical, I mean, what, what is it that you would want them to know about, um, about you and about people with migraine? Mm, that's a... It's a big question. It's a big question. It's a very broad question. Yeah. Um, the first thing I would say is don't give up on, on us. And whenever we say we're in pain, we're really in pain. Um, and if we're struggling, the struggle is real. And everyone experiences pain and struggle in a different way. So I understand that can be very challenging uh, for doctors when they have to use some kind of measurement. And you know, from one patient to the other, how do you measure pain? Mm -hmm. It's so difficult. Right. So what works for me might not work for the next patient and vice versa. So I understand that it's very difficult uh, on your end as well. Uh, but please don't give up on being there for each and every one individually. Uh, I know it's super hard, but my world is my world. I, I don't share the same experience as the next migraine patient. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I need to feel that that's understood um, mm -hmm. by my doctors. That's great. That's great. And, and I think that's, uh, those are important words for a lot of us to hear. Um, have you encountered that a lot that, that you, you run across people, maybe, maybe not even in, in healthcare, but, but just people that you, um, know in your family or people that you work with that, that maybe minimize what you're going through and just don't understand the, I guess, the nuance of, of having migraine. Yes, all the time. And not, I don't, I don't think uh, it's done in a malicious way. I think people just don't understand it because it's not like with other diseases where you are diagnosed with something that's concrete, that affects a certain part of your body that either has a treatment and you get cured or in remission or uh, it's chronic and you have a treatment plan. This still has so many um, uncertainties of like what works, what doesn't work, how or why, mm -hmm. that there are no um, absolute answers, mm -hmm. I, I think. So um, when I start feeling bad and I go into these uh, periods of bad migraine attacks that, you know, eat, I cannot seem to get past and it's like day in and day out of like more and more symptoms instead of getting better I get worse and it gets to the point where even my loved ones start saying again like can't you just like you know uh, concentrate like you know you will it to uh, get better as if it were something that is psychological mm -hmm. and because it's uh the, 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 the biggest symptom is the headache. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't see all the other symptoms that come with it. Well, yes, if you're vomiting, they'll see that as well. But right. other than those major symptoms, they don't see the ringing in the ears, the sensitivity to smell or to light or sound or um, the irritability, the, all, all these other imbalances that happen that come together with a migraine, the fatigue, the fogginess, uh, the blackouts, the not knowing what's happening, unable to concentrate, 
all these things are unmeasurable and are difficult for others to see. Mm -hmm. And when they start happening um, and they just see one of those things, they might like, how come you didn't remember to go uh, pick up the, the, the dry cleaning uh, when I told you this morning? And, and you don't have an answer to that because it's one more ingredient in like the hundred of things that are happening that day to you that are affecting how you're functioning. Um, and they're just seeing that abstracted little item and they're not seeing the whole and it's not because they, they, they can't. It's just what the little window they have into your entire world. And that becomes really hard um, because you don't even know what you're going through. Uh, sometimes and it's like I, I, I don't know like uh, or when somebody has to repeat five times what they told you it's like I told you this like already like three times this week and okay if you say so I can't remember you telling me that or having had that conversation <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so people getting annoyed or uh, you know frustrated and thinking that either I don't pay attention or that I'm distracted or that you know, I'm using a headache as an excuse to get out of something uh, and not realizing the depth of uh, the symptoms that I'm experiencing and how I'm trying to hide them to act as normal as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that, that, that touch, you, you, you touch on a lot of things in, in those comments um, that, that, really, that really hit on the issue of stigma. Yeah. Right, uh, and the stigma of, of migraine not only um, you know not, not not only among the people around you, but even sometimes even the people who take care of you. What, what what would you say is the is the the biggest stigma or maybe the biggest myth um, about having migraine that, that you see or that you hear? Oh, um, that it's not just a headache. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the biggest one. Everyone. Uh, thinks that migraine is synonym to just a really bad headache. They don't understand that it's like a whole body experience. Uh, a whole system uh, is in short circuit, basically, and um, everything is affected. Mm -hmm. And in my case, um, it's the sensitivity to smell, to sound, uh, the nausea, the forgetfulness, the uh, unable to focus, the fatigue, but that's my story. There are so many other stories that have different symptoms. People that get aphasia or uh, that vomit or that, you know, get aura or get the ocular migraines and don't see. It's like there are so many instances, so many different uh, experiences, uh, case by case, and um, some are extreme and some are, might seem milder, but it's each migrainer's world. And if it affects your normal day-to-day -day life in a way that you don't function normally, it doesn't matter if to the outside it looks like, oh, you know, I, I have migraine and I just push through them. I take an Excedrin and in two hours I'm fine and I can keep going. Well, good for you. <laughs> right. You know? um, it's it's not that easy all the time. So the biggest stigma is it's not just a headache. It's so much more. Uh, so being able to eliminate that and making migraine synonym of this huge debilitating monster of a disease is what I think needs to happen. Um, it's well we've 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 heard a lot about the the message that you have for for those of us who treat people with migraine and i and i wonder now just as we close do you do you have a message or is there something that you want to share with with the 38 or more million people in the world that have migraine and or, or i'm sorry in the united states one billion yeah. in the world um what is your message for them you're all superheroes uh, and I hear you, I feel you and I hope that it will become one day that everyone will understand what we go through and please never stop fighting to 
feel better, share your stories, but never give up hope. Always think that tomorrow can be better and never ever give up hope. We can beat this and we need to raise our voices together. We need to be the ones advocating for ourselves and, you know, saying we are here. Um, the title of my video is Invisible Hero. And I want to, you know, hopefully create a hashtag movement on social media from invisible to I'm visible. Because we're not invisible. We are visible and we are superheroes. So hopefully everyone out there listening can join in and help and show what their superhero moments are with this disease. That's a that's a great way to end. And and I encourage you all to to watch the video. Again, we'll post the link. Look for that hashtag. I'm visible. I I think that's that's such a nice twist on on the title of your film, Invisible Hero. Um, and with that, we'll uh, we'll close. And thank you all so much for for joining us. And uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll film some other, uh, some other videos with Maria later that you can watch. But for now, thanks so much for joining us live. Thank you.